Welcome to the Link G4X tutorial series. In this series, we will install the latest Link plug and play ECU into this Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. This car runs the original RB26 with its throttle bodies intact. So, we're going to show you how to set up and tune a uh, throttle body boosted car, which is a bit of an unusual setup. And we're going to use the Link plug and play ECU, which means we're going to remove the original factory computer, open the casing, replace the circuit board with the Link circuit board, and reinstall it into the factory location and with some very minor sensor changes, get this car from running in no time at all. We'll then go through the entire setup process of this, uh, of this engine, showing you how to time light the engine, because the cast sensor here on the front is variable, you need to make sure ignition time is correct. We'll then go through the process of setting up all the different sensors, ensuring the car is ready to start, go through the starting process, and then on to the tuning process. So here we have the latest Link G4X plug and play ECU for the GTR, and we've also got a Mac style three port solenoid. The only other thing not pictured here we're going to add is a uh, fast response air temperature sensor that will fit in the original hole and um, that will be a standard quarter inch size air temperature sensor. So let's have a look inside this, uh, this box. So inside we get, this is the new circuit board, and you can see it's just a board, not a Felicia in a case. You can see it's got a uh, blue connector here, which is the original style connector for the uh, standard loom. And so here you can see we've got a connection for the link, key, uh, link tuning cable. And this is the actual ECU itself. And then it's adapted onto a circuit board which fits in the original uh, casing for the Skyline. And then presents you an original uh, factory connector. Also included in the box is some stickers and some uh, things for your, your car. We've got the manual for the ECU and we should under here have a special link tuning cable. Uh, one of the problems with link is that you have to have their cable to tune the ECU. It's not a straight USB like a lot of people. You can see here it's a special connector it has to go into here together and uh, then you get USB for your laptop. So let's have a look at this uh, ECU here. We've got a built-in map sensor and we've got some expander ports here to allow you to wire into additional sensors that aren't presented on the main connector. So if you want to put some extra features on there, you can wire it into these pins here. So even if you've done a few ECUs before, it's always worth taking the manual and having a good look through it. Some of these ECUs have some specific jumper settings or some specific errors that will not work with certain cars. So you can see here, for example, there's a board switch setting which we have to be careful with. If you've got an R34, use this setting. If you've got an R32 or an R33, use this setting, for example. Whether you want TPS output, what else we got on here? Pretty standard sort of stuff. So it will talk about here, it's important that your pressure so if your map sensor is taken from a stable pressure source and so on, and is teed into the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, this will then run a vacuum line back to the onboard map sensor here. Your alternative is you could get a map sensor, put it in the engine bay and wire it directly into one of the spare pins. But in our case, we're just gonna use the vacuum line to the ECU. It talks about here about using a fast response air temperature sensor, is what we're gonna do. And you can see some pinouts here for the internal connectors. goes through the process of connecting to the ECU, calibrating your throttle, how to make the multifunctional display work in an R34 and so on. Trigger calibration, stuff how to set up your CAS sensor and so on. And goes through all the process you need to go on. And then here's a final output wiring here. So in the Link software, a Link ECU would normally have a bunch of pins like AN volt, AN temp and so on. And what this is doing is saying what factory assignment they've given it to. And then you will get a, a whole bunch of pin numbers here, obviously, on the outputs of the ECU and how they relate to the original link numberings or naming, should we say. So known issues on this one. This doesn't appear to be any known issues for this one. So it's always worth going through the manual before you start. We'll need to make sure we set the jumpers correctly. Let's see if we can spot where they are, just down here. So on this particular one, rather than being a uh, pin jumper like it used to be, it's now actually a dip switch. 
So you just need to flip these switches back and forth to on and off. And you can see it's reminded here. And what this does is just changes some of the functions of the pins here because there's obviously been a, a wiring change between the R34 and the R32 or whatever. So you need to make sure you've got the right wiring uh, for, your, for your loom. And the way it's done is just by these switches here, it will translate different pins to the actual link circuit board. So in a Nissan Skyline, the ECU is just behind this panel here. So we need to remove some of the, inter the interior trim pieces to get behind here. And we'll find bolted to the side of the car, a silver box with a loom collected to it. And that is the original factory ECU. So let's pull that out now. So here's a trim piece removed and you can see the factory ECU is just up here. But this is quite interesting. This car was obviously originally a Japanese import, which means it had the original uh, 180K uh, speed limiter on it. And we found a little grey speed limiter remover here that basically wires into the factory loom and causes the ECU to uh, override its speed limiter. It's quite interesting. So I'm just going to whip the ECU out now, a couple of bolts to hold it in, and then uh, we can open it up. So the ECU's out. It's a pretty standard sort of uh, 90s Jap car ECU, square grey box, silver box. And so we're going to open it up, and you can see how this blue connector here matches up to the uh, circuit board that Link provided us. So just open it up and uh, swap them over. So here's the ECU with the top cover removed. So there's a whole bunch of screws on the circuit board that we need to remove. There's also these extra screws here and this daughter board. And there's also the bits on the side here, some uh, heat sinks for these parts here. Make sure we remove the screws from here. Be very careful with these old Jap screws. They seem to be, have a tendency for rounding. So you might have to drill one out if you end up rounding the head off, but be, be careful and you should be able to get them all out. So as well as the top, there's also a bunch of screws on the reverse and these are actually the ones that will hold the new board in. And if you look closely on this particular ECU, they've actually had what looks like solder put inside the screws or over the screws to help hold them in. So it looks like we're going to have to get a bit handy this one to get this board out after all. Alright, so what I've done is I've just taken a grinder and cut a new flathead by making a line across the top of the thing, which means I can put a uh, screwdriver in there and I can now unwind them like normal flathead screws. Right, so the board's out. It's important that you don't destroy these screws because you need to put, you to use them to put the new board actually back in. But just cut a little head on there and a bit of force was screwed up enough to just crack off the solder. So there's some little nuts on top of here. We want to remove these nuts. And then we want to put the uh, ECU into the casing like so. And then put the original bolts away through all these, all these new bolts either way. And then the extra bolts around here. The other thing we need to think about now is that we've got a cable around the back here. And this cable is going to need somewhere to come out of. And also we need space for the vacuum line to make its way into here. Now the vacuum line can probably come through this old hole here for the old potentiometer for which we've removed. Um, but we have to probably cut a little gap in here or potentially cut just a couple of grooves in here to cut a little bit of metal out of here just to allow space for our uh, communication cables come out of the ECU. Obviously, if you're using any of these connectors here, you might want to create a small little hole for your wires to come through somewhere as well. So the ECU is in the uh, casing. I've cut a small bit out of here just to make room for our communication cable to come through. Uh, I've used this hole here, which is perfect for our silicon hose. I've used three mil silicon. I'm going to have a whole load of length go through the firewall of the carb off, to the, um, off onto the engine. And you can see it connects here onto the small little map sensor. It's probably a good idea that you put some sort of clip on this or a cable tie at the very minimum, because if this pops off under boost, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to work out why you, your car's not running right and where your boost leak's coming from. And the last place you're going to look is inside your ECU casing. So make sure you secure this. So we, here we have our final assembled ECU. And at first glance, you wouldn't even realize it was a non-standard ECU, apart from the small little fact of the wires out the back. But uh, yeah, bolts back in the original place, plugs in as normal, and then we can test it. So before we can connect up to the Link ECU, we just need to download the latest PC Link software for the G4X. If you're using a G4 Plus, you get the G4 Plus version. Or if you've got an older Link ECU, you can find the legacy versions on the website. So download the right bit of software for your ECU, install it, plug in USB, then we can turn the ignition on and test it. So we've got our Link software installed. We just turn our key on and press our immobilizer button. Well, the fuel pump primed, that's a good sign. And we're online. So it says here the ECU is disabled. So what you need to do is go to ECU controls, uh, da -da -da -da, or our ECU unlock, give this code to your link dealer, 
and they'll give you an unlock code to enable the ECU to start the car. Uh, we're a link dealer ourselves, so I can get the code in just a minute. So we've got our unlock code. Hit unlock, unlock code accepted. And there we go, we're online. Let's have a look quickly through there. We've got our map sensor. It's reading 100 kPa. Engage pressure is basically zero, that's good. Coolant temp, air temp, both reading about right. Uh, TPS, that works. Excellent. So the ECU in theory is ready to start after we get the uh, timer light out. Uh, I'm just going to swap over the boost control solenoid and uh, the other air temp sensor for a faster response one. But the ECU is all online and working. Alright, that's all for this episode. On the next episode we'll have a play in the engine bay, get those bits wired up, timer light it and get it started. Thanks for watching.